Hey everyone, back again. Today we're going to talk about the authoritarian personality from Adorno and others. But like, I gotta let you know where I got this from. So I was listening to Muna. It's a great band. You should go check out Muna's work. They, they're really up and coming, um, really good artists. They're making really cool music. But they also have a podcast called Gaotic, which I definitely recommend. But one of the members, Naomi McPherson, was mentioning the authoritarian personality to give you an idea. So if you're into, the, <laughs> into this stuff, so are they. So you already have something in common. Go check it out. Uh, they were mentioning the authoritarian personality and I was like, what the hell? I've never covered that in my own. I was like, I, what, what am I doing? So I got to cover this term. But of course, I'm going to be limited here. It comes from a text that's like a thousand pages long. So we're going to be limited. But this will give you a really nice introductory look at Adorno and others to work into this. But before jumping into it, hi, I'm David. I explain philosophical concepts and ideas and ways to make them accessible to you. So if you're new here, like, share, subscribe. You'll see videos are released every single week, sometimes twice a week. You can help me out by doing those things, liking, sharing, subscribing, tell your friends. Who knows, they might get a kick out of it. You can help me out monetarily via Patreon or PayPal. No pressure to do that though. If you found this on YouTube, you're gonna be able to find it just as a podcast, pretty much anywhere where you get podcasts. Or if you found this as a podcast, you can find the video of it on YouTube and see my office if you want. You don't need to. You can help me out monetarily via Patreon or PayPal, but no pressure to do that. Let's jump into the authoritarian personality. No more wasting your time. The authoritarian personality from Adorno, working with Horkheimer, there's also Levinson, Sanford, Frankel, Brunswick. All of these people were working and understanding what leads people to adopt authoritarianism, to either become authoritarian or to fall in line with authoritarianism, to follow the herd along very problematic and violent tracks or trajectories, like with what happened with Nazi Germany, for example. So they were trying to understand what makes people or primes people for a life of prejudice. Is it personality traits that they have, that they have learned through their society? It kind of is for them. They identify that there are a number of different systemic forces that contribute to people's adopting the authoritarian personality, which we'll get into as we go along here. Now, like I said, like this is drawing from a thousand pages of text, so we're gonna be limited. You gotta go read the whole thing to get the whole sense of it. But they essentially wanted to try to find if there was a way to measure someone's propensity for authoritarianism. And they give us like a number of different scales to understand it. There's the F scale that determines someone's likelihood to fall in line with fascism. There's the anti-Semitism scale to see how likely someone is to fall into anti-Semitism or to adopt anti-Semitic views. And then there's the ethnocentrism scale. How likely are people to just align with people of their own race and culture while viewing others as being subhuman. So they provide these and other scales as a way to measure someone's likelihood of falling into an authoritarian personality, to adopting an authoritarian personality trait. Now they're specific though that the authoritarian personality is specific to industrial society. And the reason they say this is because the authoritarian personality is at once both a highly rational person and irrational to them. Authoritarianism relies heavily upon very precise forms of calculation, mapping, control, differentiating inside from outside. And so in that way, it is like highly efficient. It is highly rational, but it is also irrational in the ways that it adopts prejudice, uses these tools in order to forward ethnocentric ideals about who the superior race is, for example, at the expense of others, and using that narrative to justify discriminating against others, exercising prejudice against others, and committing potential violence against others. Now, this comes after the so-called promise of enlightenment was to liberate people from what Kant once called self-imposed tutelage, which means that we no longer just follow the rules that come from outside. We instead follow our own destiny, embracing our own individual selves as being the most important thing in life. Now this was the promise of the enlightenment, at least as Kant identified it. But Adorno and the rest of the gang are a little bit suspicious as to whether or not that actually played out. Because I mean, look at Nazi Germany. I mean, this was just a prime example of people falling in line 
without any given thought to it and using that and how that was used to justify committing genocide against Jewish people and Roma people and gay people all across Europe, including countless others. So what is going on here? Clearly the Enlightenment has failed, or as Adorno and Horkheimer argue in the dialectic of Enlightenment, it kind of succeeded. I mean, of course this will happen if we live in a world that reduces people to statistical figures and numbers, not developing communities with people in love with people, but seeing them as vectors of possible oppression, like treating them as units to be exploited as workers that can then earn somebody who owns them or who can buy their labor, earns them money. So treating people as a means to an end. It is also a society in which progress is measured by the tools and the toys we accumulate, by the types of cars that we're able to create, not by the love we foster between people and communities, how we're able to unify people, how we're able to bring people together in a common recognition of our humanity. But no, people measuring themselves on the basis of what commodities they adorn themselves with, what commodities they then do not like, and they form their personalities around that. So for Adorno and the rest of the gang, like this is highly localized to the industrial economy, one that permits all of these things to occur at the expense of acknowledging other people's experiences in the world, being able to align with them, to cry with them, to love with them, and so on. So some of the questions that they would ask would be to a, like a non-Jewish person, how likely would they be to marry a Jewish person is just one way to measure their degree of anti-Semitism with one of their scales. And that's just one, I mean, this can happen along so many different, <laughs> like in terms of race, like asking a white person how likely they would be to marry a black person, their feelings about black people, for example, or vice versa in order to measure people's ethnocentrism, how much they actually localize or view their own race, their own culture, their own heritage as being the only one that matters. Now the results found that people were highly prejudiced against others because of the stereotyped image that they had of others, viewing certain people in a certain way based off stereotypes, not because they actually know that person in themselves and how they actually exist in the world. So they would judge people in advance, and then that would determine how they would actually engage with those people. And this is all prime territory, the prime beginnings of the authoritarian personality, because it bases difference as the core determining fact like in politics and uses that to justify violence against others who do not comply with the outgroup in order to constitute a defendable in-group. And where out the outgroup's equalities are seen as being negative, and their personality traits, their cultures, their identities are seen as being negative, whereas the in-groups is seen as being positive, as a site, as a possible way, way towards salvation. Now they suggest that this might actually have its basis in the European family structure, where children at a young age are taught, totally absentmindedly, to just follow the rules of the parents, the patriarch's authority, and nothing else. We find this naturalized then in like Freud, who suggests that the Oedipus complex is somehow indicative of how all human relationships are. Of course, it only mirrors or reflects one kind of nuclear family dynamic. But I think that Adorno and them are onto something here when they suggest that this, this begins in childhood. Children are taught to just simply follow the rules. And in the meantime, they're denied a voice. Adults rarely listen to kids and actually see them as being possible sites of knowledge. They're just things that need to be trained and molded. And this primes us for like primes children to fall into authoritarian values. And they give the exact example of like, oh, the kids in my day weren't like this type of thing in order to encourage compliance on the part of children. Like, oh, when I was younger, I didn't do any of this. Like I followed the rules or something like that. And this is all just evidence of people falling in line with something like these rules. So the authoritarian personality then is one that vehemently opposes democracy. It tries desperately to make sure that people do not come together equally and express a voice in their equality. It instead tries to impose a voice onto people, try to make them think a certain way instead of allowing them to think for themselves for the betterment of their communities and their lives attached to those communities, not as separate 
like atomized, living in the suburbs, white picket fence, 2.3 kids, eight cars, like, and that, you know, totally in isolation. Like, these are not the marks of progress for Adorno and them. Instead, these are signs of a highly alienated culture. And yeah, I hope that that covered it. If uh, you don't already, go check out Muna, some cool tunes. Um, they were touring with Taylor Swift, I think, as well. So yeah, you know, they're very, very popular now. Go check out their stuff. Is there any, if there's anything I got wrong about this term, I'd love to hear about it. Or anything I excluded, it was like a thousand pages. So, you know, likely something I excluded. Let me, and let me know what you think. Do you agree with it? Like, do you think that this is too reductive? Like, how can we rethink this today? I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. And yeah, on that note, take care.